Hi, I'm Serafina and we're at AngelMD's Alpha Conference over in Napa, California. I'm joined by JJ Desai, COO of JLabs and the Center for Device Innovation in Houston, Texas. Thank you so much for joining yeah, us today. Yeah, total pleasure. Thanks for having me. So um, I'd like to take a little bit of time to really dig into your background and what brought you into the health innovation field. Yeah, thanks. Um, I usually try not to bore people too much with this, but I'm, we're sort of the struggling physician, which I think a lot of people are really like the micro uh, economic impact of health, so one-on-one -on -one patient delivery, mm -hmm. but that kind of nagging, well, I wanna try to impact more people, so the macroeconomic pool. So I just started you know, reaching out as a med student, trying to figure out how can I get involved with policy or business or whatever it is, and stumbled onto a tech transfer process, which was sort of my first entree, um, helped discover a small molecule that looked at some uh, cancer vaccinations and, and was able to tech transfer that out of the university, and that kind of got my interest peaked but it wasn't the full drive to leave medicine at the point. So I said, okay, I still really want to understand Practice. the patient journey and, and be a physician and get that lens. So kind of went on, got involved with the biotech, looking at a really novel solution of trying to deliver medications without a needle. Um, and that ended up being a successful endeavor, which continued to keep me really engaged, right? It's like hitting a couple good golf shots. You want to be a golfer for the rest of your life, even though the majority <laughs> of them won't be good. And then as I entered residency, I had the serendipitous occasion of meeting sort of a lifelong mentor, John Simpson, um, at a coffee shop as he was starting uh, two companies. And he just sort of said, why don't you come help? Uh, and then I just, I sort of kept turning up day after day. And that ended up being, uh, you know, a, a 10 year run uh, as we took that company through private, public financing, global scale. Uh, and that company is now known as? Avenger, yeah. Right. <laughs> and finished um, residency, went on to be faculty in practice anesthesiologist by, by training at Stanford. Um, and then, you know, through that, just got really involved with teaching. Uh, I helped start a, some of the teaching curriculum at the Biodesign program at Stanford. And then just showed up to the Texas Medical Center one day uh, to try to get involved because I really liked what they were doing with that ecosystem and knew a couple of the folks putting together the Biodesign program there. Uh, delivered a, you know, what I thought was a, a great lecture and then had the chance to sit and meet with a bunch of companies. Had a great just one-on-ones and last company of the day, 30 minutes into it, um, a, a character of all characters, Billy Cohn, walked in, you know, really nice suit, cowboy boots, and we had this, you know, just polarizing conversation with this company and he walked me over to this, you know, this thing that J&J &J was doing there and said, you, you got to really be a part of this. And I said, that's crazy. Why would I ever want to do something with a big company that is so slow and doesn't really do innovation? Um, and it piqued my interest, and that's when I dug in, and I, I now, a year later, I'm at J&J, &J mm -hmm. helping to, to do all the things you said. Right, and in no small capacity, you're the global leader uh, with the J-Labs group. So what exactly does J-Labs do? Yeah, so J-Labs, uh, it actually took me a little bit of, of, of diligence myself to understand it. So I think a lot of people said, you know, this model of incubation or acceleration, we'll invest some money, take some equity, help you out, and mm -hmm. see where it goes. They kind of did the opposite. They said, wow, we have all these resources at J&J. &J. If we just built something and helped people, but didn't cap the upside, so no strings attached, we take no equity, we make no investments. People actually, when they show up, they pay a licensing fee to use the space and get access to all this phenomenal capital equipment. But most importantly, the programming and the mentorship that's provided, all in non-confidential capacities. Um, and so JLabs really thrives on that ecosystem. And we've opened up locations now, West Coast, Houston, so San Francisco, San Diego, Houston, Toronto, we're opening up New York in June, and we just announced Shanghai. And we have a, about 330 companies, therapeutics, med device, health tech, all that come in and they, they essentially say, we, we just want to be around J&J &J because we know there's expertise that will probably help us. We think this is a best in class facility. The, the places are a ton of fun to work in, right? We think we are one of the best places in the cities. We, <laughs> we really take the design seriously. Um, and from that, has, we're starting to see the roots of success. We're just five years in, so I think a lot more still to come. Right, and then just in the other room, you're giving a talk on J Labs, and you mentioned that the companies are shaping you almost as much as you are shaping them. Speak a little bit more about that. Yeah, I think you're, you're missing something if you're not impression, you know, if it's not a symbiotic relationship, right? So it's hard not to be impressed by early entrepreneurs and by people that are just literally living and dying by trying to create unmet needs and best practices for patients. So, you know, every interaction you have, I think we could put our head down every day and just try to operate the thing, but we take the, we take the true sentiment to get to know the company. So I think we call the companies friends. Uh, we really know them beyond just being a license fee. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what really drives relationships all the way up to J&J &J wanting to do confidential work with them. So it takes that kind of dedication to the cause, 
um, which I think every early entrepreneur can identify with. Got it. And uh, you mentioned therapeutics as one of the major um, interests of these uh, early ventures, but what else, are, what else is on J&J's uh, innovation, I guess, radar right now? So J&J has three core sectors, therapeutics, med devices, uh, and consumer medicine. And so I think when it started, the first J-Labs per se, or JJ, J Johnson Johnson Innovation, which started and J-Labs sits within that, um, was tied to our Janssen Research and Development um, campus in San Diego. Mm -hmm. So just naturally, a lot of therapeutics came out of that. And as we evolved and grew into different economies, so Houston, Toronto, New York, we got the benefit of the diversification of talent that came along with that. So mm -hmm. now we have a really healthy blend, about 60% therapeutics, 30% med device, 10% consumer and then health tech that layers over all of that. Mm -hmm. um, so we're starting to see just an economy of scale of innovation by showing up into what we think are the best pockets of innovation in North America and, and now as we think globally. So as you get more and more geographically uh, diversified, you're also noticing a trend where talent is really pouring in from all over the world. Um, can you speak to one or two of your uh, favorite companies? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so I, they're favorite. all my favorite companies, uh, <laughs> but I can give you some examples yes, that might meet yes. with that criteria. So I, we're really a portfolio without walls, which is becoming more of a ubiquitous, uh, I think, uh, theme, because when, if you start in San Francisco or Boston, those are still just such amazing places to be, but they're dense and they're expensive, and so people are naturally filtering out of there, and there's this great capacity to, to grab a lot of that. And so I think mm -hmm. Houston, as an example for medical devices, is this amazing opportunity where there's incentives economically to be there, there's space to grow, and now with J&J &J and a lot of other folks alongside the Texas Medical Center, really putting money and time down to say, we'll help you. Um, it's almost, it almost, if I'm an investor, an early stage innovator, why wouldn't I be yeah, there? Yeah, so intuitive. Right? It's almost like yeah. such an advantage. And so, I, you know, I think some of the companies coming across, uh, spoke a little about my talk, but uh, they've realized that. So we have companies coming from Brazil, like Hubox that I mentioned, that is a software layered on top of, you know, an application that could be consumer based, it could be medical device based, but they can use facial expressions to drive robotics. And I think that, you know, they come out of a small lab just north of Sao Paulo, mm -hmm. we meet them in Sao Paulo, they come to Texas, and now all of a sudden, because of J&J &J being there, that they can just enter into all the relationships that we have there and really get some, some key feedback and prototyping done. Therapeutics much the same way, right? People are trying to solve Alzheimer's, aging, really big things out there, mm -hmm. that if they just have a cadence of interaction with J&J uh, &J experts in their field who are, you know, some of the world experts, leading experts in all these therapies, and every quarter they check in or every month and say, hey, I think you're on the right track, maybe consider this. That's like invaluable experience for those types of early startups. And, and saving that just even one, two, three months can be you know, instrumental in the financing of those companies. So. And typically how long is a company's tenure at uh, J-Labs? Yeah, so two years. Okay. Um, if you, you want to apply if, to stay after two years, you have to really make a solid case for it, mm -hmm. meaning you have to be on the precipice of a milestone that you think uh, we can help, but we want to always leave room for, you know, that early, early stage. So we don't want people to get, you know, too, too full and fat and comfortable in J Labs, mm -hmm. and and then not be forced to grow out on their own. So we want them to just have enough friction that they want to start leave their own the thing, nest. leave the nest, mm -hmm. and always make room for the next crop because we think that that's why we exist is to shepherd them through those two or three years that are the hardest. Well, great. That's been extremely educational. Thank you so much for, for um, having me, yeah. informing us about J-Labs and all the ongoings and congrats on Shanghai. Uh, thank you very much. We look forward to tuning in. Yep. All right. Well, thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Thank you. That was JJ Desai, CEO of CDI, the Center for Device Innovation, as well as J-Labs at the Alpha Conference.